So part four, part four of glory career. The glory career. Tell somebody, you are a glory carrier. Part four. See, some things in our lives are not are non-negotiable. When it has to do with the glory of God, with you know, carrying the glory of God, it's not negotiable. You, as a Christian, as a born-again Christian, you are a glory carrier. So there's nothing enemy can do about that. You know, Satan cannot call somebody God as blessed. So Satan cannot shake God's purpose for your life, except you allow Satan to do that. So you are a glory carrier. I am a glory carrier. And in this part four, we're going to see how we have to fight that battle. How you have to fight the battle of the fact that you are a glory carrier, an enemy cannot stop you. You got to glow. You got to shine. You got to bring forth the glory of God. The Bible says in, in Isaiah 16 from verse 1, it says, your, for your light has come. It said, arise, shine. For your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Verse 2 of that Isaiah 16. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Amen. The world will come to the brightness of your rising. That will be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. You shall not be a darkness to the world. You shall be a light to the world in the mighty name of Jesus. So what is glory? In part one, two, three, we explain that, but I want to just, you know, just give it in summary. Glory is the manifestation of the presence of God. Look at glory. God manifesting his presence in your life. Physically, financially, spiritually, socially, in all aspects of life, God manifesting his glory in everything you lay your hands upon. So the glory of God is the tangible manifestation of the presence of God. Something you can see. Something that the world can perceive and they can come to that light. So, what is tangible? I have never given this. I was just going through part four and I said, when I said, the, I said, the glory of God is the tangible manifestation of the presence of God. And I think I should tell the people or give the definition according to the dictionary of, what, of the word tangible. What is tangible? From dictionary, tangible means perceptible by touch. For example, the atmosphere of neglect and abandonment was almost tangible. That you can always see this. Tangible means clear and definite. There is no doubt, no iota of doubt. They can see that glory in your life. They can see your life radiating. They can see God manifesting himself in your life. Clear and definite, real. Real, very real. Something that somebody can see. So real. Isaiah 40, verse 5 says, The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. All flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. So, the glory of God will be written in your life in 2019. Say amen. amen. It shall be written in your life in 2019. Amen. The Lord shall manifest his glory in your life in 2019. Amen. And all flesh shall see it. It shall be evident. It shall be clear. People shall see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken that. Receive that as a prophecy for 2019 in the mighty name of Jesus. The glory of God distinguishes you it makes you attractive and magnetic and is a trigger for favor. May God favor you. Amen. May all the kings of this world favor you. Amen. May the government of this land favor you. May, this, may the system in this country favor you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, favor shall be your portion. It's a divine command. This is a command. It's not something that you can negotiate with anybody. It's a command. God said, you, you should arise. You should arise. You should shine. Because the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. This is your season of glory. Tell somebody, this is your season of glory. It's your season of glory. Arise and shine. For that glory of God is risen right now upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 
So we have treated how to arise and shine. So by raising your thinking, you raise your expectation, you raise your perspective, and you raise your praise. So uh, then with, I told you about shine. Shine means you perform very well. You shine. For anything you lay your hands upon, that your profession, the spiritually, everywhere you find, you perform very well. You are very talented and you grow. And how can this be done? How can this be done? How can I be a glory carrier? So, in this part four, we are going to see the third key. In part uh, two and three, we treated the two other keys. There are three keys I gave to us. Leave the word, do the works, and fight the war. So, three keys that will help you to be a glory carrier. Three keys that can unlock the mystery behind carrying God's glory. Three keys. First, you leave the world. Second, you do the works. And the third, you fight the, the, the war. Leave the world. John 1, 14 says, And the world became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. It is not enough just to be a Christian or to just tell people I'm a Christian. It is not even enough to know the word of God. Your life must become a living, breathing expression of the word of God. You know, some people will not even open the Bible. You read the Bible, they will read. So you leave the world. You show, you show your life as a good example of the manifest, manifestation of the scriptures, of the word of God. That is to say, you become one with the word of God. Leave, it, leave the world. You become one with the word of God. They see you, they see God. Everyone will see Jesus in you through the expression of your life. Do the works. We explained that in part three. Do the works. The word, you know, um, the, when you explain, when, when, most people, when most people hear the phrase good works, you know, they immediately think of spiritual works only, like preaching, praying for people, or serving in the church-related context. No, not only that, not limited to that. However, is this phrase goes beyond that. Do the, do the works, good works, goes beyond that. The word for works in the passage is, in this passage is taken as Greek, word ego, egon or egon. You know, um, if, you, if you see very carefully the way we look at the church, we just think that you know, when I walk, then I'm saved. No. Christians are not saved by works. We are saved for works. So the word ego in, um, in, 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 in Greek, ego, was taken, if that word good works was taken from the word ego, Greek word ego, from which we get our English word Ergonomics, the science of maximizing efficiency. So you maximize every efficiency you got, and you and you increase the productivity. So once efficiency is maximized, producti productivity must increase. So as a Christian, you are not saved by works, but you are saved for works. So you maximize every opportunity you have. You give all to the Lord. In fact, Christians should always have that phrase: no reserve, no retreat, no regret. Christians should have that. When it has to do with working for the Lord, serving the Lord, following the Lord, doing the work of the ministry, it should be no reserve. You should not reserve anything from the Lord. It's non negotiable. And you will say, no retreat. No retreat. You keep moving forward for the Lord. Do it, do it as long as you have your being. Working for the Lord, showing the glory of God because we're a glory carrier. And you say, no regret. Christians must not regret of doing anything for the Lord. Because it's a privilege. It's a privilege to serve God. It's a privilege to give unto the Lord. It's a privilege to work for the Lord. So you are not saved by works. You are saved for works. For by grace you have been saved, Ephesians 2, 8 to 9, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Let me just quickly go straight, because if I continue to go on these preambles, there are so many of them will not live here. Let's go straight to the one in part four today. I have told you in part three, go and listen to part three. You see various ways you can do good works. Various ways you can do good works. I gave you about six of that. You will go, go back and look at professional good works, domestic good works, look at um, uh, relational good works, social good works, charitable good works, and spiritual good works. Go and see the details in part three. So let's go to part four. 
Part four. Fight the battle. So three keys I gave you. What is the first one? You leave the word. Say somebody, tell somebody, leave the word. That is, you live according to the word. What is the second one? Do the works. You serve the Lord. You are not saved by works, but you are saved for works. As Christians, you are saved. God will have taken you out of earth immediately you gave your life to Christ. And you go and be with him in glory. But he allows you to stay here after you are born again because he wants to be part of the move, movement. He wants to be the part of the ministry. He wants to be the part of reaching out to all the lost souls. Amen? So that's why you have to do the works. The necessity is laid upon you to do good works for the Lord. Amen? So the next one is fight the war. What has that got to do? What has carrying glory got to do with fighting the war? What has that got to do? It has a lot to do. It has a lot to do. In fact, this life is a war. We are fighting here. We have to put on all the armor of God. Either you are a Christian, you are not a Christian, you have engaged, as long as you are here as human beings, you have engaged yourself in a serious battle. Fight the war. Then you will say, no reserve, no retreat, no regret. As a Christian, you will stand your ground and tell the enemy, I must succeed. I must fulfill my destiny. I must carry the glory of God. I must, I must glow. I must shine to the glory of God. I must do this work while I have my being. I must serve the Lord. I must give up for the cause of the gospel. And when the end comes, I can boldly say I have fought a good battle. It's a good battle. This war I'm saying is a good war that we have to fight. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. First Timothy 6, verse 12 says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Apostle Paul was telling Timothy here, as he sword in the Lord, say, Fight the good fight of faith. The fight we are talking is a good fight. Not every fight is good. Some people engage themselves on a useless fight. I don't have time for that. If you come to me with a fight that is useless, with a fight that is negative, with an encouraging fight, I will not like to engage myself in such a fight because not every fight is a good fight. Amen? So, but Apostle Paul was telling Timothy here, in that first Timothy 6, 12, says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Anything that has no eternal value is not a good fight. It doesn't worth fighting for. Anything that is temporary, anything that will just stay here, it doesn't worth fighting for. Amen. It doesn't worth fighting for. You have got to have his place. What is a good fight? What is a good fight? So don't forget, we are treating the keys. The keys of how to show the fact that you are a glory carrier, to show that the glory of God is risen for you and you carry glory, the glory of God. The three keys to unlock that ministry. So the third one is to fight the war. So don't forget. So what is a good fight? A good fight is a fight that at the end of which there is a noble prize to be won. At the end of the fight, there is a noble prize to be won. When you win a good fight, the prize you gain glorifies God and advances his kingdom. That's a good fight. So now let me ask you, what has that got to do with glory? Are you here with me today? I'm trying to break this down little by little, and I pray that God will grant you understanding in Jesus' name. The fact that you are a glory carrier is not negotiable. No matter what comes your way, necessity is laid upon you to show the glory of God. You have capacity to contain God. As a Christian, as a born-again Christian, you are not ordinary. People can look down on you. People can say anything they want to say. They have their mouth to run their mouth. That will not change the purpose of God for your life. Except you allow the enemies, the enemies cannot overcome you. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So begin to exercise your authority right now. Do you listen to me? So I'm trying to explain to you, and I'm trying to bring you to that understanding of the fact that you are a glory carrier as a Christian. As a born again Christian, you are a glory carrier, and it's a war. Devil does not want you to be that. As God has plans for us, devil also has plans for us. For who always wins? God wins. Devil is a loser. 
a permanent eternal loser. God wins. Second Timothy 3, 3. I mean, 2 chapter verse 3. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You must endure hardship. So, what does war, fighting a war, has to do with glory? You, I, want to, I want to take you there. Listen, it takes a fight to endure afflictions and stand your ground and maintain your faith. It takes a fight to maintain the equilibrium, to, to sustain the a particular level, it takes a fight. It takes a fight. Even in the world, it takes a fight to sustain a level of life. It takes a fight. For you to continue to stand as a Christian, it takes a fight. That's why you have to put on all the old armor of God. It's a good fight. Now, that passage is explained certain things to us. So, what is the raw material that produces glory? So that's what I want you to understand. When we are talking about fighting a war and glory, what is the raw material? Can I ask you that question or ask your friend? What is the raw material that produces glory? You want to hear that? Affliction. Affliction. Do you want glory? You must be ready to carry the cross. Do you want resurrection? You want resurrection? You carry the cross. And you go for crucifixion. Amen? So, the raw material that produces glory is affliction. When a Christian is facing affliction, hey, glory is beckoned on you. Promotion is at the door. When you face challenges in life, do you know the ladder to climb to a place of glory is affliction. People don't want affliction. People don't love affliction. People don't want to plant the seed. They want the fruit. But it's not natural. It's not. You got to plant the seed to get the fruit. They ask you, where is the fruit? Where is the harvest? Where is the harvest? Let's go do the harvest. Listen, go and talk to farmers. They will tell you the process of getting good harvest. If you, do, if you want good harvest, you follow the process. But most of us, we want the product. We don't want the process. You want, the pro you want shortcut, microwave. You want microwave, drive through. Give me the coffee. You can only do that one in Burger King. In life, you got to prepare the coffee yourself. If somebody is preparing that coffee for you, it may not be palatable. So the raw material for the glory that you, we are talking about is affliction. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians 4, 16 to 17. Am I talking to somebody this morning? Is somebody listening to me this morning? And you want glory? Children, you want glory? Children, you want glory? Okay. The affliction of studying, you must face it. You burn that candle. Amen? Come and ask me. How many, how many of you use uh, ever dream? You know what they call ever dream back home? You want to sleep, you want to read the book, and you are feeling sleepy. They tell you, your friend tell you, go and buy ever dream. You, and you take ever dream, you cannot sleep. It's stronger than taking a coffee. Some of us, we take coffee. Some people, we put their legs in the water. They feel uncomfortable. They don't want to sleep. They want to crash that mathematics. They want to crash that physics. That chemistry, Lambert. Oh, they want to, Nekon, where are you? They want to finish it. They want to finish it. I can see, remember, man's, man's physics. You read it. You balance that equation. Either that equation lies or not, if, if Muhammad is not going to go to the Monte, Monte must come to Muhammad. You study and you read. But there's a time of glory when you go and look at the result. Oh, you thank God. You roll on the ground. And those that are looking on the city, some of them will begin to weep because answers are not written on the city. Affliction. You want the glory? The raw material to get the glory, the more raw material to have good success is what? Affliction. So, affliction is connected to glory. So, this year, 2019, is our year of glory. It's a season of glory. So, when you are facing certain affliction, when you are facing certain challenges, remember, glory is coming on the way. Don't give up. Glory is coming on the way. 
You say, no deserve. You say, no retreat. You say, no regret. Forward, ever, backward, never. When it's becoming so hard in this country, remember, glory is coming on your way. It's coming on your way. When it's looking at this, oh, it's very hard. Can I give up? Don't give up. Don't give up. Keep fighting. It's a good fight. Hallelujah. It's a good fight. A fight for success is a good fight. A fight for glory is a good fight. A fight for victory is a good fight. You don't fight in vain. The mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't get me started. Can I start to preach? Hallelujah. Can I start? Where's the microphone? <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so, wherever you see affliction, especially in life of a believer, look out. There is glory coming around the corner. It's coming. So, affliction has weight and glory has weight. Affliction has weight and glory has weight. Let's see that 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 to 17. To 17. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Even though our outward man is aging, is aging. That is why it is not too late for any of us to make it. It's not too late. Even though our outward man is saying that you are aging, you are aging, you are aging, but old age is in the heart. I'm telling you, you can see, say, our uncle, Daddy Obasanjo, just got PhD. <laughs> PhD in Open University, PhD in Theology. At age 80, he just got his what? I was telling somebody, say, oh, that is not, uh, they just passed him. Hey, I think he read, he, he, he did some research. Now he's got his PhD. So, <laughs> praise the Lord. It's, <laughs> it's never too late. It's never too late. So the Bible says, therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Affliction is for a moment. Challenges is for a moment. See, storm in life is for ceasing. Do you understand? I don't know what you are passing through right now. It's for a ceasing. Time of glory will come. I can tell you, the Bible cannot be broken. When you pass through affliction, it's for a season. The Bible is saying it. It's not permanent. No season is permanent. Somebody, I was just parking my car last week, and my neighbor was saying, four weeks to go. I was, what is he talking about? See, four weeks to go. I said, what do you mean by four weeks? He said, this call will soon be over. Say four weeks to go. I said, yeah. Four weeks. He said, by the time we finish February, don't worry, it's going to be over. I said, okay, thank you for telling me. But listen, very soon, also spring will come. Spring will go. Summer will come. Summer will go. I will come back to winter. No, no season is permanent. That's how God designed this life. That's, how, that's what makes life good. Your affliction is for, is for, for a moment. It's working for us far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory. So which means if the glory of affliction is for a moment is light, the glory of uh, the, the, the weight, the weight of affliction is light. So the weight of glory is heavier. Do you understand now? This place is saying the weight of affliction is lighter. Let me read it again so we can explain this. I know time is growing but I want you to understand this. This second Corinthians is so good. Chapter 4, verse 16 to 17. Therefore we do not lose heart. Don't lose heart. Don't give up. Even though our outward man is perishing, even though our flesh does not want affliction, our flesh does not want storm, our flesh does not want to walk, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day for our light what? Light what? Light affliction. Affliction is light. Storm is light. Which is but for a moment, and it's for a moment. Storm is for a moment. It will soon be over. It will soon be over. And he said, it's working for us. Hmm? So, affliction can work for us. Yes. So, storm can work for us. Yes. Temptation can work for us. Yes. Problem can work for us. Yes. 
He's working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Which means, if you cannot succeed and carry the weight of affliction, you cannot carry the weight of glory. Because the weight of glory is heavier than the weight of affliction. If you are a man, you buckle under affliction. You will melt under glory. That is why so many people, if they fail to pass through affliction and get prepared, when they get to the place of glory, they will give up at life. They will, they will not be able to handle it. So many men can handle, you know, some problems in life, some kind of challenges in life, but little men can handle glory. Only few men can handle riches. Only a few men can handle prosperity. Some people under prosperity, they go everywhere. They are, they are, they are very, will be shiny, 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 They will be doing some nonsense, some nonsense, some nonsense. Some will say, I got money right now. I need to have a tall wife, short wife, a big wife, you know, small wife. I have money now. I have money now. I need to, I need to go, I need to go build my house in this space. I need to go with Russia to this space and get my lot in this space. Oh, I got house now. I got money right now. I got, I need to fill my yard with fleet of cars. Oh, I get money right now. I need to deal with my enemies and take my enemies to court. Some people cannot handle wealth. Some people cannot handle riches. You see what David passed through to get to the, to the throne of glory? You see what, what Joseph passed through to become prime minister in the foreign land? If he failed to handle that affliction, he will not be able to succeed in the palace. He will not be able to succeed. So most people, they don't want affliction. They don't want it, Pastor. They don't tell them, oh, no, 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 pray for me. Pray for me. Prayer will not exempt you from affliction. Who want glory? Do you want glory? Can I tell God to give you affliction? <laughs> you know, God allows, why do you think God allows the weight of affliction to precede the weight of glory? Because it's a preparation for you. God wants to prepare you so you can carry that glory. So, it's a war. Glory, to have the glory, is a war. Seasons of glory, is a war. As we declare it now, you'll be facing so many challenges. As a church, we face challenges. But listen to me very carefully. At the end of that affliction, glory must beckon on you. Amen. Glory is at the corner. Don't turn back at the helm of glory. Don't turn back at the edge of glory. Amen. You are just about to hit it. Amen. Don't give up. Tell somebody, don't give up. Don't Tell somebody. Don't now say this after me. No reserve. No retreat. No regret. No I never, never, I will never regret anything in my life. A Christian should not say, oh, if I had known, no. No, 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 no. Why? All things work together for good for those that love God and those that are called according to his purpose. That man in your life is not an accident. That woman in your life is not an accident. As a Christian, as a boy, you can say, oh, I was not a Christian then. Listen, why I was yet a sinner, Christ died for me. He sees all your move. Even while you are still doing your own thing, he sees your move. And his eyes is guiding you. And his eyes brought you to that point. You are not an accident. Because you came from that family, it's not an accident. Because you are in this country, it's not an accident. Do you know how many people want to come to this country? They can't make it. Do you know how many planes have crashed? Do you know how many people that got their, they got their visa and they died before boarding the plane? Go check it very well and go to the State Department and see those who are, Google those who, are, those who got visa all over the world and didn't make it to the America. You see their numbers. You see their numbers. Do you know those that were given the citizenship after they've been dead? They apply, they pass everything, 
and then come and do the swearing in, and they died. They can make it. You have made it to 2019 by the grace of God. The grace of God that brought you here will see you through. The grace of God that brought you to this level will see you through. In the mighty name of Jesus. Tell somebody, know the treat. Know the treat. Know the serve. Know the great. Forward ever. Backward never. When it has to do with being the glory carrier, you must fight it out. I want to stop here because of time. I will continue. You must fight it out. You must not give up to the enemies. This life is a battle. It's a fight. You have to fight to make the money. You have to fight to enjoy the money. Do you know that devil wants you to make the money? He doesn't want you to enjoy it. You have to fight to make the money. You have to fight to go for vacation. If you are not careful, you will not go. Amen? If you are not careful, you will not go. Because you will think, I never make it enough. Oh, that only day they're going to pay me 12 and a half. Hey, it's 12 and a half. It's a battle. It's a battle to have children. It's a battle to enjoy them. If case is not taken, you will serve them for the rest of your life. Hello? Hello? It's a battle to be married. It's a battle to enjoy your family. If care is not taken, enemy will engage you. Quarreling today, quarreling tomorrow. To be a glory carrier is a battle, and you have won the battle. Amen. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Tell somebody, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You are a glory carrier. You have to glow. You have to shine. Arise now and shine. You have to shine. In any situation of life, you must arise and do what? And shine. And then devil will be crying somewhere. Your enemies will, will, will be brought to shame. Father, we thank you, bless your name, because you are good. Thank you for this wonderful time and opportunity that you have given us to be together today. The last Sunday in January, you brought us to this day. We know you will see us through. It's our year of glory. It's a season of glory. May we continue to carry your glory and show the light to the world and glow that glory. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. God bless you.